My mom. She abandoned me years ago and then just shows up out of the blue with a new kid, a baby. I don't even know where it came from. Turns out that's my half-sibling. Well, long story short, she wants me to take care of her and the baby because I'm successful. Now, keep in mind, I haven't seen this woman in like seven years and she abandoned me. I had no food, nothing. No one to take care of me. Well, you know what? I'm not going to let this baby go through the same thing, and I'm not playing games with her, so I'm going to tell her exactly how I feel, and I might just get CPS involved. Have you ever felt like your life is going good, but then all of a sudden a fragment of your dark past just shows up and threatens to ruin everything? Along with it comes the years of old trauma that threatens to disrupt your mental peace. Well, that's what's happening to me right now. I would strived hard to be the person I am today. But with the arrival of my mother back into my life, all my efforts seem to have been for naught. I know it's an unusual thing for a son to be so displeased to see his mom, but that's just what that woman has made me to be. I'm Matthews, and as you can guess, I sort of hate the woman who gave birth to me. Jane, my mom, please don't take it the wrong way and uh, think that I'm some guy who hates his family for no apparent reason. My mom gave me a long list of reasons to hate her when she abandoned me some seven years ago. But now she's back and I don't know what she wants from me. Frankly, I don't even want to give a damn about why she's back, but I can't stop thinking about it. And the fact that she's not alone is not helping at all. Yes, yeah, she came with a two-year-old baby in her arms, and by the looks of it, I'm guessing it's her baby. I don't know why, after all these years, she decided to show up at my doorstep. You guys must be wondering the reason for my enormous hate for my mother. Well, let me put your minds at ease and clarify where all this hatred stems from. So, my mom was a single mother and raised me alone without support from anyone else. This was all because I was a result of a teenage pregnancy. My mom was just 16 when she got pregnant with me during high school, and as you can guess, my dad was an enormous jerk. Because as soon as my mother broke the news of her pregnancy to him, he asked her to terminate. But my mom was just straight up adamant to not sacrifice an innocent life and ended up uh, bearing a lot of trouble for me. Even her Orthodox Catholic family kicked her out of the house and she had nowhere to go and ended up doing a few menial jobs just to bring me up. You see, it's not like I don't appreciate what she's done for me. I acknowledge the fact that she went through a lot for me, but that doesn't give her any excuse to be mad at uh, mother to me. Yeah, she was a bad, absent mom to me and from age 9 or 10, all I could remember about my childhood and my mother was alcohol and drugs and a string of one night stands or casual hookups. That's what my childhood looked like. My mother used to forget to pick me up from school and I used to come back home with my neighbor only to find my mom either not at home or lying wasted face first on the couch. By the time I reached 13, I learned to look after myself. Uh, by look after myself, I meant I used to wash my own clothing, though I did not do a good job. I used to cook for myself when my mom would not be in the condition to do so, and it was majorly just heating up canned food and some burnt bread. If that can be considered cooking, but it was enough to not let me starve. To top all this off, I used to take care of my mom and clean up after her during her endless hangovers. So you can imagine what type of life I lived as a 13-year-old, and it only got worse from there... My mom's addictions got worse and the list of different guys she brought home each week kept on getting longer. She had started getting used to me taking care of everything on my own. Through all my childhood years, she never paid any attention to me and was busy in her own happening life. You can imagine the type of trauma this thing had left for me. She didn't care much about my life and she used to delay my school fees a lot. But I consider myself fortunate that she actually remembered to pay for it or get the groceries. Things were bad for me, and with the passing years, my life literally turned miserable. It wasn't just my mom, but at times, the cronies that she used to bring home would also order me around the house and get their things done. I was bearing through it all because I didn't have any other option. Like, what could a teenager do if his mom was treating him like crap and slowly, yeah, gradually? Through all these years of trauma, I started to feel a certain dislike for my mom. But that did not mean I didn't love her and care about her. I loved her a lot, and that's why I decided to take all this mistreatment without protest. After all, it was just a matter of a few days, right? That's what I thought while tolerating all this bullcrap. I'd made up my mind to get as far away from all of this once I turned 18. But my mom had other plans for me, so, you see. When I was 17, my mom met this rich guy at some club. 
She brought him home a few times, and by the way he looked, all the expensive things he wore, he clearly reeked of richness. I was surprised by the whole thing because my mom usually did not stick to one guy for long, but this one? It seemed like she was in it for the long run. I was actually happy. She had gone through a lot, and maybe this was her chance at a stable life. But all of this happiness faded when she broke a certain good news to me. So guess what? After some months of dating this guy, my mother tells me that she was marrying him. Yep, yeah, that could be good news, right? But then came the news that uprooted my already miserable life and turned it worse. She told me that she might be going to some other city with him. I was still happy, still hopeful that maybe this could be my chance at a normal life. But then she just told me that she could not take me with her, since her boyfriend was not ready for a burden of a kid, to tag along with them, and she explained to me how this could change her life and she needed to go. It was not like she was asking for my permission or anything, she was announcing her decision to me. I cried a lot and pleaded with her not to leave me alone here. As much as I disliked my mom, I knew that I would not be able to survive without her, and I just kept on crying and requesting her either to take me with her or we could just stay where we were. She just sat there dumbly with me, not speaking a word, not even comforting my manacle cry. I knew that she did not care about anything but just her boyfriend. And just like that, my mother had left when I woke up the next morning. Most of her stuff was gone, and she had only left behind a few ragged clothes. The only important thing she left behind was a shattered child. I guess she never considered me important enough to take me along. I was helpless at the time. I mean, I was just 17 and had no job, and the month was coming to an end, and uh, the rent in the house would have going to be paid soon. But I didn't have the money. The landlord gave me two extra weeks when I couldn't pay the rent, but after that, he just gave me a notice to vacate the house in a day. My mother left me homeless when I was just 17. That is what that woman had done that made me hate her so much. I was helpless and didn't have any source of income, so I turned to one of my friends who let me stay at his house. His parents and he were very supportive of my condition, and soon I dropped out of school and worked three jobs at a time. I wanted to complete my studies, but I needed money for it. And even before that, I needed a place to live in. I couldn't live in my friend's basement forever, right? I worked hard for a few months and finally was able to rent a tiny one-room apartment. It was a start, and then soon, after a year or so, I'd saved enough money to complete my education. I couldn't entirely pay for it, but I took some educational loans along with the money I saved. So, I worked very hard to build myself from scratch, and never in these seven years did I hear anything from my mother until yesterday. I'd given it my all to get over what she did to me and the trauma she left behind, but now she was back. You can imagine my surprise when yesterday, I heard a knock at the door and it turned out to be her. As expected, I shut the door right at her face and I didn't know how else to react. But she showed up again today and again I did not let her in. And this is what's brought me here, guys. If you can't already imagine, I'm in a damn mess. Like, why is she here after all these years? I don't know what to do and how to deal with it. I don't know what she wants and I'm trying to ignore her, but for how long can I do that? What should I do, guys? Should I continue ignoring her? Should I just talk to her once? I'm so confused. Please tell me how I can deal with the situation. Update number one. Hey guys, so, it's been two days since my initial post and I'm here with an update. As you know, I was pretty confused and not in a very good state of mind when I wrote the original post. I'm somewhat calm now, so here's an update of what's happened in the past two days. But before getting into that, I would like to reply to a few comments. Firstly, to the people who supported me about the whole thing, thank you for being there for me when I actually needed it. It was a bit relieving to know that there's people supporting me throughout this whole thing. Now to the people who called me a weakling for not being able to come to a direct decision, you don't know the trauma I've gone through because of my mother and how long it took me to move on from that. So I don't even expect you to understand how messy my mind was, that I couldn't come to a firm decision. But now I've finally made it. After I posted the initial post, my mother visited me again the next day, and the day after that, and initially I ignored her. But I couldn't do that for much longer, so I decided that I should talk to her to find out what she wanted. And guess what? On talking to my mom, she introduces me to the baby in her arms, Ian, my half-brother, as she calls him. But what came next was a bit of a shock to me. Guess what? My mom wanted me to take the baby and her in because as soon as her and sons and the baby's half-brother, it was my responsibility to look after them. 
Well, I was taken back. I mean, like, how could this woman show up at my door seven years after abandoning me for some rich guy and expects me to take her in like she's been there all along? I asked her what happened to her rich guy. She starts to cry at that. Apparently, days after leaving me, the rich guy cheated on her, and the only thing my mother could not tolerate was disloyalty. She left him, but she just couldn't come back since she had left me for him and she knew that I would be angry. So she just stayed in that city for years where she found another guy. No, he wasn't rich, but he was decent and she dated him for a bit, and things just turned nasty when the guy turned violent towards her. She knew that she had to leave, but until then she had been seven months pregnant. So she decided to carry on with the relationship for the baby as she didn't want to go through the troubles of being a single mom. But the guy soon started changing his colors. He often lost his calm and harmed Ian. And that's when my mom knew that she had to leave in any condition for the safety of her baby. That's when I popped into her mind. and She went to our old neighborhood asking around and that's how she reached me here as I'm still in touch with a few people there. I didn't know if her sob story was true or not, but it moved me. My mother was there crying in front of me, telling me that she was not the same woman who abandoned me. I really wanted to believe her, but hey, I knew better. I mean, come on, I just knew better. I knew I couldn't trust her fully, but then I saw the baby in her arms. I mean, what was his fault in all of this if his dad was a violent jerk? Exactly, like what? Uh, it was my fault that my father ran away before I was even born? I could not subject this baby to the same life that I've gone through at my mom's hands. I didn't trust my mom fully, but there was still hope. And even if she hasn't, I uh, wanted to save Ian from her. So guys, I've made a decision. I've decided to take my mom and Ian in. I know a lot of you wanted me to let her into my life never again, but this feels like I'm uh, just doing the right thing. I don't want to risk Ian going through the same trauma I went through, so yes, I've decided to help my mom and Ian. Let's just hope I've made the right decision, and this simply does not backfire on me. Update number two. Hey guys, it's me again, and as opposed to how calm I was feeling in the last update I wrote two months ago, this time I'm livid. So apparently I was wrong. I know some of you would uh, say, I told you so, but guess what? My mother has not changed a bit, she's still her old selfish self. And I can't believe I've been a fool to even think that she could change. I was willing to forgive her if she showed me that she had actually changed and I wanted to see her being a good mother to Ian, which she never was to me. But she shattered all my hopes and it just makes me angry. Like, why would this woman give birth to us if she never intended to take care of us? Let me tell you guys what all has happened in these two months that has led me to write this update. After I took my mother in, she had assured me that she would soon try to get a job and try to make a contribution to the household. I was a bit hopeful that maybe she was trying hard for Ian's sake, even though she never did it for me. I was still happy for Ian. I mean, no one deserves to go through what I went through. But as I mentioned in the last update, I still didn't trust my mom completely. So I had installed hidden cameras in my house just so I could keep an eye on her. The first few weeks after she moved in with me were fine. Everything seemed normal and she used to majorly stay at home with Ian and go out for a walk or something at times. Sometimes she used to come back with a grocery bag and I thought she was actually getting comfortable in the house but then soon enough I noticed what all the groceries she was getting. I noticed a lot of beer bottles in the fridge. I confronted her about it and she assured me that it was all in control and she was not consuming alcohol that much. Just uh, some here and some there and I stayed uh, shut for a bit, but it just gave me a stronger reason to keep a sharp eye on her. Soon, the pattern started to emerge again and she started bringing guys to my house when I used to be in the office. I was angry. I knew that her story about being a new changed person was fake. I was just waiting for a moment when I could catch her red-handed and finish this fake thing once and for all, but she crossed all the limits. Yesterday, I was out on a two-day business trip and I knew I shouldn't have left her alone at the home, but her feeling like she was free to do anything might have given me a lot of proof to record. You won't believe that a mother could actually treat her child like this, so yesterday. While I was out in another city, my mother had brought some guy to my house and they were in the drawing room drinking. Ian was also there playing in a corner, but then something happened that made me lose all my patience. Ian tripped on something and fell slightly and started to cry. My mom got up and shut him up. 
but he seemed to be inconsolable, and uh, would you believe what my mom, uh, what this woman did? She went and locked Ian in her bedroom and came back downstairs to continue drinking with the guy like she didn't even care. It just made me so darn furious. So much so, I booked a ticket back home at that exact moment, but unfortunately, I could only get a ticket for this morning. That's where I'm at right now, riding this from the airport while waiting for my flight to start the boarding process. I don't know what to do with the rage, so I thought riding it down might help, and after seeing the whole thing, I just could not leave Ian with her. She had left him crying there in the room for about more than two hours before she actually went back and opened up the room. I felt so much pity for Ian, but more than that, I was furious at my mother and myself. I was furious at myself for believing that she was treating Ian better. I was just furious for leaving him alone with her. I'll soon be back home, and I know I need to do something about this ASAP. I can't just let Ian keep living with an irresponsible woman. I'm really furious right now, and I don't know what I'm going to do. But I'll make sure to teach that evil woman a lesson. Update number three. Hey, uh, guys, it's been just a few weeks since my last update, and you won't believe the crazy things which have happened in the past few weeks. But at least there's some good news. Ian is finally free of my mother. Yep, I'm so relieved that I was actually able to help him and he did not have to end up going through the things that I went through. So, let me just start from the very beginning because as I told you guys in my last update, I had solid proof against my mom for being careless and irresponsible towards Ian. I wanted to make her pay for all the trauma she put me through and was most probably planning to put Ian through. As I was on the way to my house in a taxi cab, I called CPS. Yep, called their department and reported the whole incident to them along with the footage that I had of how my mother was irresponsible and incapable of bringing up Ian. By the time I reached my house, they were already there and were ready to take Ian away from mom, while mom was crying not to take him away. I couldn't quite understand it. I mean, it was the same person who had locked Ian in the room when he was crying, so what was all this fuss even about? When she saw me approaching them, she begged me to ask them not to take little Ian away, and that's when I told her that I was the one who called CPS. She was shocked. I just told her that I could not let her ruin Ian's life like she ruined mine, because she was clearly just a selfish witch. She cried and cried and begged me more and told me that she actually cared about Ian. Yeah, right. I couldn't roll my eyes hard enough at that, and... Right after that, I also kicked her out of the house as I didn't want a selfish woman like her living underneath my roof. The CPS started their investigation and what they found out was so shocking. So, my mother is just a dang good liar and an emotional manipulator. Remember how she told me that she was dating Ian's father? In reality, she was actually married to him, gotten a divorce because of the whole abuse thing. It's not all though. The man was paying my mother child support every month and it was finally clear to me that she was so adamant about keeping Ian. It was not that she cared about him. I guess the type of woman she is. She never cared about her baby. It was always just her and how she could get the money to live a good life. This woman really disgusts me. I mean, how can a mother be so selfish? It was all about money for her from the very start. and I still feel ashamed by the fact that I share the same blood as that woman. I just wanted to get her out of my life forever, and that's what I tried to do, but she kept showing up at my doorstep asking for help and money. But obviously, I was always shutting the door on her face. She also has a case going on in the court for child neglect. I hope she gets the rightful punishment for her actions. Meanwhile, the CPS is trying to find a good foster family for Ian. I do hope he finds a family in which he can have a better life and a better future, unlike what my mother was offering him. Let's just see how everything turns out. Guys, I'll keep you updated about what exactly happens. Final updates. Update number four. Hey, guys, it's me, and yes, I'm back with another update. I know it's been more than four months since my last update, and a lot of you were curious about what happened with my mother and Ian. So, here I am with an update, and this will most probably be my last update on the whole thing, as things seem to be finally in place now. So, let me start with the good news first. Ian has finally found a good foster family, and I've been there to visit him a few times, and the people in his family seem to be taking good care of him. Not gonna lie, but the time I spent with Ian has made me very attached to him. So, finally seeing him in a better place was a relief. I've decided to visit Ian every month, and he seems to like it. Even his foster family is very supportive of my relationship with him. Now, getting to my mom. 
About her rights of Ian, she has lost all her custodial rights to Ian and is only permitted to visit him sometimes. And do you know what else? It suddenly seems that she doesn't care about him at all now that she has not visited him even once. Obviously, she showed her true colors now that the money was gone. I'm actually glad that she's away from him because Ian deserves a better place. And better than the presence of a selfish, toxic mother. Also, my mother is in a lot of debt right now. The case ruled against her and she has to pay a huge fine on the charges of child neglect. So lately, she's been really miserable and initially, the government also put her into some crappy rehab center where she ran away. I guess old habits die hard, huh? And all she knows is how to run away from things. But she could not run very fast as right now she's just hoping from you know, one crappy shelter to another since she doesn't have the money to rent out an apartment or even a trailer. Whatever money she's trying to get is going into her fine for the government. She also turned up at my doorstep quite a few amount of times, but I threatened her that if she did not stop bothering me, I would call the police on her. It got her to leave pretty soon, and well... All in all, my mom's pretty miserable right now, and I guess that's what you get when nemesis is finally catch up with you. I don't feel a shred of regret for that woman because she deserved all of it. As for myself, I'm actually at a better place in my life right now, and all the drama's far from me. At least something good came out of this. I mean, Ian and mine were bonding. At least I have someone to call a family, and now my major focus is my career and to make sure Ian gets a good life. Well, that's it for me, guys. Lastly, I would just like to thank you guys for being my constant support throughout this journey. I agree, it was very difficult, but your support made it bearable. So thank you. Goodbye. Top comments. First comment from the main post and the update says, I can't believe how evil can someone be. I actually had hope for your mother, but I guess some people never truly change. I'm happy that you decided to take charge of things and decided to make her pay for what she did to you and Ian. That poor baby deserves so much better and so do you. It was all very brave of you, OP, and I knew it took a lot of courage, so more power to you. Comment 2. I get it. Your mother was wrong, but what was the whole thing uh, that you were doing? I mean, was it really necessary? Like, if you didn't trust her in the first place, then why did you take her in and offer to help? You should have kept her at bay from the get-go. Plus, do you really think foster families are a good way to ensure a child's future? Come on, you don't know for sure what trouble foster kids go through. If you cared so much about Ian, you should have taken him in yourself. Alright guys, the last comment got a lot of attention, really. It's saying, hey, why didn't you just take Ian in, since you seem to care so much? But there was a lot of commenters who were like, hey, chill out. OP didn't have the means to take Ian in, and yeah, we get what you're saying. Him going to a foster care home could potentially be worse than staying with the mom. But we don't know the whole intricate aspect of it. And hey, CPS themselves said no, this is not a good enough home for this kid. I do want to hear your thoughts, guys. Let's discuss it down below. My name's Mr. Redito, and if you're new to the channel, I drop videos like this every single day. I do hope you enjoyed them, and if you want to be a part of this, all you have to do is subscribe. I'll see you guys tomorrow, and of course, remember, it's cool to be kind. Peace.